Sailing across an ocean with your partner on your own boat is a dream for many people. But what is it really like? There is nowhere to stop. You have to sail continuously day and night. One of you has to be keeping a lookout at all times. This is a day in our life mid-ocean. We are Matt and Amy. We've been living aboard and sailing around the world for five years now on our 37-foot sailboat, Florence. We have already crossed two oceans together and are now on our toughest challenge yet, crossing the Indian Ocean. In this episode, we'll show you how we manage life on board at sea, our watch routine, and the daily decisions that we have to make about route and sail choice while sailing offshore double-handed as a couple. We are hundreds of miles from land, halfway through our voyage across the Indian Ocean, and this is what a day in our life is like. just coming to the end of my four hour watch. It's been a really easy watch, but sometimes that makes it actually more difficult in a way because it's really hard to stay awake. I've been struggling, but um, Matt's just getting, getting ready to take over, so I'll be able to go back to bed. It's a lot less wind than we were expecting, isn't there? Yeah, a lot less. It's just literally died off more. We've had more like 14, 15 knots for the last last hour but okay. yeah no clouds to worry about no ships all fairly easy just a bit slow all right well sleep well and i'll see you in four hours mm. it's another beautiful moonlit night it's so bright it's almost like daylight but unfortunately it still won't come out on this camera and we're going fast in the right direction towards the seychelles a little bit more of a confused sea state which is what we'd heard about when we did our research about the Indian Ocean. It's still pretty special to be out here. This is our 15th day at sea on this passage, and by now we're becoming more used to the broken sleep pattern required for offshore sailing. It's never easy to get up out of your bunk in the night, but this watch is possibly the most beautiful time to be awake at sea. Oh, the sun is super bright this morning. I've been on watch for the last three hours. Um, just been round to as soon as the sun came up, uh, set the fishing line and just tidied up a bit on deck. Just spent a bit of time tidying up the cockpit from last night, putting any ropes away that we didn't need. And just walking around the deck for a bit of a check and to get rid of the flying fish which had landed on the deck in the night. The wind and the sea state have really calmed down during the night, so it's making for much more comfortable sailing. Not quite doing the seven knots that we were managing yesterday, but um, yeah, it should hopefully have allowed Matt to get some sleep this morning. Matt should be up in about 10 minutes, and we'll check the latest weather forecast and see about having some breakfast. Morning. Morning. Oh, it's a lot nicer out here today, isn't it? You can really tell the sea stays smoothed out. They're so comfy in bed because the boat's just healed over that little bit, so you're kind of like held into bed instead of rocking fully both ways. So normally when it rocks both ways, you get half thrown out of bed. But I didn't want to get up this morning, it was nice and comfy. Beautiful, yeah, 15, 15, 16 knots of wind, that is perfect sailing wind. Cool. 
Right, I guess I better get the weather and see if it's going to stay like this. First thing first, make a log entry and then we know where we are and then we can use that to get the weather data. Check the pressure, 1008.5 millibars, so that's not changed very much. So that indicates things should be steady. Right, satellite phone and normal phone. So I just need to write a message to request a grid file download and also a message to Des, our weather router, to tell him where we are. So he keeps an eye on the bigger picture for us. If there's any uh, cyclones or bad weather coming that's uh, currently a long way away from us, that would be outside of the small area that we can download for weather because we've only got a limited bandwidth on this. We can't download the whole Indian Ocean and have a look at the weather across the whole lot of it. Des keeps an eye on that for us and we just look at the little bit, maybe the next, normally the next seven days of weather is about the maximum we can get. Uh, and then also send a message to update our tracker so that our patrons and our friends and family back home know where we are. So we write all the messages we want to send and then there's a compression, email compression program on the phone that makes that file really small because the satellite phone link is pretty slow, it's like dial-up speed and we haven't paid for the extra uh, antenna to have a better connection to the, to the satellite so I have to hold it above my head to make sure it's got a good signal. So I just downloaded the weather file onto the laptop. Green at the moment so we should get fairly lightish winds which is what we got and then just uh, so that's tomorrow evening really we're just going to be on the edge of these higher winds which on here say 22 knots but we we know they're normally a little bit more than what we get on this forecast so we might have up to maybe 30 knots but 30 knots downwind is fine not a problem for us at all and we'll get some bigger seas it just means we'll do a bit bit of surfing so nothing really to worry about um, and then we just need to keep an eye on this light wind area this blue here but that's further away that's sort of wednesday thursday we're now on a saturday so uh, we just need to keep an eye on that we might need to angle a little bit more south to stay below it and keep in the wind on the way up but other than that we're uh, we're all good Even on a calm day like this, you can't make a cup of tea without wedging everything onto the gimbal stove or having anything on the countertop without a non-slip mat. In windier weather and bigger seas, even something as easy to make as instant oatmeal becomes a juggling challenge that we don't always achieve. A bit rolly today. What happened to the porridge? Went everywhere. One big wave, and where it went. It's not what you need when you're tired in the morning. Stopped out the bowl. Thank you. Nice. Oh, most instant long life foods that we can have at sea have got this like gruel like texture, um, and we find just adding a, a tiny bit of granola and some seeds just makes it much more interesting because you always craving crunch when you're at sea. You might ask why we don't just eat granola and that was because it was eight pounds a bag in Indonesia so it's rationed. After a brief period reviewing the weather and having some breakfast together it's back to the solitary life of a sailing couple. I have a snooze while Matt keeps watch for a few hours. Keeping watch today is pretty easy. So the things we're looking for is any ships that we might hit and the visibility is so good that I can stand up on the side deck and see for literally miles and miles to make sure there's nothing coming. And then the other thing we're looking for are any uh, squall clouds that might cause us to have to make the sails smaller. And there's none of them around either, it's just blue skies and a few little wispy clouds. So I just need to every 10 or 15 minutes stand up on the side deck, have a really good look around try and make sure that I stay there until we're on the peak of a wave so I get a really bit of extra height to see that much further and then yeah we're good for another 10 or 15 minutes I can go and do whatever I want to do.
I tend to have a walk around the boat about once a day, just checking out anything for any chafe, anything that's creaking or might need any lubrication, just to make sure that we don't get any surprises. Something we don't normally have to do on our offshore routine is take each other's temperatures once a day, which we now have to do, obviously because of COVID, to be allowed into the Seychelles, we have to have a, a temperature check once a day, every day on our passage across so that we then present that record to them. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about that is that then when we arrive, because we'll have been at sea for more than three weeks, they're quite sensible about it and they don't make us do a further quarantine. Yeah. You're still alive. <laughs> Just received the latest update from Des, who's doing the weather routing for us. He's got access to the internet and can see the bigger weather picture across the Indian Ocean. And he's been updating us on a rotating tropical storm, uh, which is currently to the east of us and heading this way. Dear Matt and Amy, I have sent you the projected track of the epicentre of the Mini RTS. The track shows that you will miss this event, assuming you continue the course over ground and speed over ground in your latest report. I would recommend you drop 10 degrees on course over ground to 285 max to ensure a bit extra safety margin in case this system either accelerates or deviates south instead of heading north. Otherwise, no other threats. Have a great day, Des. Uh, he thinks at the moment that if we can maintain our speed, then we should be in a good position and hopefully it will stay behind us. Uh, but he's keeping an eye on that for us and it sounds very much like we need to be making tracks as, as quickly as we can. So uh, we're not making as good progress as we have been for the last couple of days. The wind's dropped off a little. So we're just going to hoist the spinnaker and see if we can improve our boat speed a little. Currently doing five and a half knots, uh, but with the spinnaker up, we could easily make that six and a half, seven. So we're looking to put the spinnaker up to give us a bit more speed across and get away from that weather system that's coming up behind us. And just look at the spinnaker halyard and Last time we had this up uh, earlier in this passage when we are coming down from March, we've clearly had some chafe up the masthead. And it's a brand new block up there, brand, brand new pulley up there that we put up there. So I hope it's not that, but I'm a little bit worried that this might chafe through and then cause the problem not be able to drop the spinnaker. So I think what I'm gonna do is gonna cut that off and just tie a knot for now, because I haven't got time to do another ice splice like this. And then we'll just have to keep an eye on it and uh, make sure it doesn't chafe through. Right, that'll have to do until we can do something better. When I've got more time to do a proper ice splice. Right, now for more speed. We never used to wear gloves on board, but 12 months of not sailing far in Indonesia has made our hands go soft. The spinnaker is the biggest sail we have on board Florence, so we always work together to put it up and take it down. Five years of practice sailing Florence mainly downwind around the world have honed the techniques we use to handle the spinnaker between the two of us. We'll put a link above to a video which shares those techniques for spinnaker handling. Whilst we're actually putting the spinnaker up, the breeze has dropped off even more. We're now down to about seven or eight knots of apparent wind. So the spinnaker is really the only sail that will work on this angle in this light wind to keep us moving. But it's very strange. The, the sky's changed because yesterday and all the days before we've had these little puffy trade wind clouds. And suddenly we haven't got them today when we were expecting to still be in the trades for another few days at least. So not really sure what's going on with the weather. It does change. You can't rely on the forecast just try and keep moving in roughly the right direction. We 
doing fairly well on our water rationing. We're over halfway, but we've got over half of our water tanks left. But even though we're having to ration water, it doesn't mean that we can't have a wash or at least try to have a wash every day uh, because we're surrounded by such clean, fairly warm uh, salt water and we've got an abundance of it. So yeah, this is a, a nice way to get clean every day. The risk of falling off the boat is much higher when we are leaning over the side and dragging along a bucket. So we limit this activity to the short section of the day when we are both awake and on deck. If the weather is too rough for this, then we just smell bad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Feel better for that. Matt's just gone for a snooze, so he'll be down below for probably a couple of hours. And I'm just keeping watch. Uh, we've still got a spinnaker up. So it takes a little more attention than the rest of the sails as it's more likely uh, that the Aries or the wind vane uh, can't quite cope and change direction soon enough. So uh, sometimes the sail flaps and you have to get to sort that out. So it just takes a bit more watching than the other sails, but it does seem to be gaining us a, a good speed. So worth keeping up for now. Because we're sailing west, the sun is directly in front of us in the afternoon, which means that for half of the day, the solar panels are in shade because the sails block the sun. That would normally and does normally cause us a bit of an issue with our batteries, but our batteries are unfortunately at the state where they desperately need replacing. We're going to be doing that as soon as we get to the Seychelles. The next week or so that we're on passage, we're having to turn the fridge off at night and limit the amount that we're using things like the electric autopilot but they seem to be holding up okay at the moment so <laughs> fingers crossed they'll they'll get us to the seychelles and we'll be able to replace them with, them with something better so despite the fact that our autopilot is fixed and that we replaced the ram um, back in tello so about six months ago we can't use it because we don't have the power to do so Five o'clock and Matt's up from his snooze and it's about an hour before we have to start thinking about going into our night watchers so we need to start cooking some dinner but we haven't caught a fish today <laughs> and we're starting to run out of fresh vegetables I think we've got pumpkin a bit of white cabbage and some carrot left over so I don't know what you fancy an omelette or stir fry. stir fry stir fry will do stir fry with an egg on top sounds perfect <laughs> two eggs standard <laughs> we got so lucky that before we left the supply boat came into the island so we managed to get fresh eggs and fresh veg otherwise um, we wouldn't have even had this two weeks ago so I'm not sure what we'd be eating by this point uh, tins of stuff <laughs> yeah oh thank you very much looks good tastes good we always 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 have a meal together before we go into our night watches at the end of the day which is really really nice uh, even when we're completely knackered and we've been taking turns to just sleep all day uh, we always get together for the evening meal um, before we go into night watches to help us save fresh water we wash up all of our dishes in salt water just using a bucket and then we just rinse them using a squirty spray bottle um, it probably only uses about half one of these every time we wash up stops everything getting too salty and um, just means that we save a huge amount of water. Back home we used to be lazy and leave stuff on the drying rack to drain until it was dry. You can't do that here, you've got to dry it and put it away otherwise if you take your eye off it will go flying. So dinner's done, everything's tidied away, ready for the night. And we're just about to go into our night watches and we've got a, a decision to make about whether or not we leave this spinnaker up overnight. We don't like sailing with a spinnaker at night if we don't have to because it requires a lot more attention yeah and it's also more difficult to get down 
uh, if we do need to take it down in the night which is highly likely so it takes both of us to go up onto the foredeck so it means less rest for whoever's off watch when they get called up to, to do that it's a more difficult decision when to actually do that because if you're just doing it furling the sail on your own in the cockpit you can do it whenever and you can let it back out again if your decision was wrong and you didn't have enough power after that whereas if you get the other person up to drop the spinnaker it's kind of final it's not going back up again <laughs> um, but in our advantage tonight we've got clear skies and we've got a full moon and the last few nights have been like almost like daylight at night so we don't need to faff around with torches to do anything we can see clearly mm -hmm. so i'm kind of in favor of leaving it up for the first three hour watch yeah if we can get through three hours with it then that will be and then drop worth it. it but um also any any progress that we can make west um away from that system that's behind us at the moment is also really positive so as long as we can keep heading in the right direction and the spinnaker isn't pushing us too low yeah. and for too far north then I think that's worthwhile. I mean if the if we didn't have this system coming behind us with potentially big winds that we're trying to get ahead of and avoid then I'm pretty sure that we would drop the spinnaker now because it wouldn't really matter it doesn't really matter if we get there a day later we'd rather have a more comfortable night with more mm -hmm. relaxed and a bit more sleep but just uh, a little bit more pressed up a little bit more urgent than we normally would. Mm -hmm. So we keep up for the first three hours? Yeah, let's see if we can get three hours three hours in. I, my guess is more an hour and a half, I think it will be. So exactly smack bang in the middle, bang in the middle of my sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Some okay. people do um, watches with six hours and six hours, but because we're actually outside for all of our watch, especially if the weather's not very nice, uh, four hours is kind of the maximum really that yeah. you can you can manage before you're really falling asleep because the wind and, and potentially the rain and the spray take things out of you, so take the energy out of you, so yeah, yeah. works for us. Just setting an alarm. This clock was actually a last minute purchase before we left Indonesia and it doesn't, it was the only digital clock we could find but it doesn't actually keep the time very well so we have to change it every, what, like three days? I think it loses five minutes. Um, but it's actually one of the best things that we have bought for offshore sailing because we used to get one of us to wake the other person up and when you're so exhausted because you've just had like a couple of hours sleep at a time it's quite easy to resent and be quite grumpy towards the person that has woken you up so um, this has saved a lot of midnight bickering I think this has probably been the, the easiest passage we've had in that respect yeah it's, it's also a really good safety feature because um, the way that we used to do it before if the person who was on deck actually fell over the side then the person who was sleeping could potentially sleep for like six or eight hours before they even realized lash yourself in <laughs> you want to fall out when yeah. we roll it's like sleeping in a cot even if you don't really need it, sometimes it just gives you that little bit of peace of mind that you're not going to get thrown out of bed enough to actually fall asleep. Night night. Night night. See you in three hours. No, I think one and a half. No, I think three. Oh, I can hold on to this spinnaker. So we always make sure that we're wearing our life jackets for the night watch. I've got a harness here, so the boat now so safety first on the night watches we don't push things as much we're a bit more cautious although we are flying a spinnaker through this non 20 minutes later yeah it's the breeze has picked up and um, we're not quite making course so I think before it gets dark it's probably best to get the spinnaker down a little bit more wind now probably won't get that much slower that's better ready to stop
as the day comes to a close, I put the fishing line away and tidy up the cockpit ready for the night. The sunsets are amazing at sea. It's just a pity I have no one to share them with. Good evening. How are we doing? Oh, I'm doing alright. Uh, the breeze is pretty light. Uh, anything from 7 knots and occasionally up to 14 knots in a surprising puff. Uh, we're trying to make somewhere between 280 and 285. We've been doing anything between 4.4 Next time, we're into the final week of our Indian Ocean crossing. We push on sailing fast and try to escape the approaching bad weather, but still get hit by strong winds in the night. It's the uh, middle of the night and we've got 30 to 40 knots of wind. We've had to drop the staysail and we've put up the storm jib and we've got a triple reef mainsail and the storm jib. And to be honest, right now I'm wishing we didn't have the triple reef mainsail when we're just on the storm jib. On top of that, we have to make a decision about our routing between rough seas and rough winds as we approach the shallow Seychelles bank. We would like to thank everyone who supports us and especially our star patrons. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe and click the bell to get a notification when the next video is released. And let us know what you think of the video, we love reading all your comments.